support, and of course for the special mention in the gravity prize. So now I'm going to start with the talk. Um, as you can see the title, the main subject is null coordinates. So to start, I would like to give you some intuition about the meaning of the null coordinates, okay? So I'm going to start with this question. Suppose that we have null coordinates in a certain space time, usually the outgoing and ingoing null coordinates. What is the meaning of, of that a null coordinate, for example, the outgoing null coordinate, u, has a certain value, u equal to constant, u equal to 20 to 10, some value, constant value, okay? To understand this, we can start with the most simple example, that is um, Minkowski spacetime, where uh, the null coordinates are very well known. Here we have the outgoing null coordinate, and here the ingoing null coordinate. So let's look to the equation one, and let's try to understand what means u equal to constant. Here we have the speed of light multiplied by t minus r. The only way that this, is, this will be constant if we move along a light ray, because we know light travels at the speed of light, okay? So we can choose one light ray where equation one is satisfied. So the question is, is uh, how many other light rays we can, uh, we can take in order to satisfy this equation? Well, there are many others. In fact, we can uh, choose a set of light rays where equation one is satisfied, okay? So, which is the, the, intu the intuition I, I want to give you? When we talk about the null coordinate, implicitly, we are talking about a set of null rays. It means, talk about null coordinates, we talk about this set, and uh, we usually call to this set a null congruence, okay? Well, but with this null coordinate, we want to describe the whole space-time. So this set of null rays must fill the whole space-time. One way to do it, for example, in Minkowski space-time, is to take this outgoing radial null rays. So if we take this set of radial null rays, we can fill the whole space-time, and therefore we can satisfy this equation in the, in the whole space-time. And then we will get a null coordinate that describes whole space-time of Minkowski, okay? So, a final remark. Every time we talk about null coordinates, implicitly we are talking about a null congruence, okay? And, but this null congruence has to fill the whole space-time, but also has a very nice property, a geometric property, as you can see here in these uh, blue cycle, cir circles, this, this has to do with, uh, if we take a, a fixed value of t, we get a sphere, and in that sphere, we have the null rays that are orthogonal to that sphere. If we take another time, or another value of the coordinate t, we get a bigger sphere, but again, the null rays, the null rays are orthogonal to that sphere, okay? So, every time we talk about null coordinates, we have these null congruence with these very nice properties, okay? That's the intuition I want to, in this, in this first slide. So what about more complicated cases? For example, Schwarzschild. The null coordinates in Schwarzschild are well known. They are the Eddington and Filkinson coordinates. So the first question is, which is the null congruence that is related with, with the eddington filkinson coordinates? Well, that null congruence is a well known, the principal null congruence. There is a geometrical definition for this congruence, uh, this type of congruence has certain properties we can define for Schwarzschild, but also we can define it for Kerr space time. The thing is that, in like a similar than Mikowski, this congruence has null rays that uh, goes radially in an outgoing or ingoing, but in this way, so we have the null congruence with nice properties. Therefore, we can define the, the the Eddington Finkelstein null coordinates. I mean. But what happened in Kerr? This principal null congruence have twists. What is twist? The null rays twist like this. What is the problem with, with that? If the, if the null rays twist, 
we cannot define a surface in such a way that for each null ray, each null ray is orthogonal to a surface. But if we take the next null ray, we have to change the surface because this is twist. Therefore, the principal null congruence do not have the, the, the nice geometric property that we need to define the null coordinates, okay? So we need another null congruence to define null coordinates in care. Okay, but what happens if tomorrow we go to the textbooks and we try to study this subject? Well, it usually is present, the Schwarzschild case is, is presented first and okay, we have that the principal null congruence has very nice properties and we can define the, the null coordinates in the whole space time. And because we know the null coordinates in the whole space time, we can construct these compactified diagrams, Carter Penrose diagrams, that represent the whole space time. But in, also in the textbooks, there is present uh, a compactified diagram like this one. This this, uh, the first, the first, the author of, of this compactified diagram was Brandon Carter in 1968. He, I, I think that he knew that uh, principal null congress have twists. So the only way he managed to, to define an null coordinate was, okay, principal null congress have, have twists, I'm going to elect just one null geodesic, which do not have twists, and that null geodesic is the one that goes along the axis of symmetry. And because it doesn't have twists, we, you can define a null coordinate here. And here you have the, 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 the surface which the null geodesic is, is orthogonal. But this is only valid at the axis of symmetry. So this compactified diagram is hugely incomplete. It's, it's incomplete. It only, it's, it's only valid at one line of Kerr spacetime. Okay? So we must always remember that when we see this kind of, of diagram of Kerr, we have to remember it's only valid at the axis of symmetry, okay? See, if we see this diagram in the textbooks. Um, so, we know that we need a different null congruence to define the, the null coordinate, so if we look in the literature, what we, find, what we will find? Well, we will find that this is a very elusive subject. There are many other authors that have tried to define these null coordinates. In fact, for example, there is a physical review letter article here in 2004 that uh, gives a this definition of null coordinates, okay? So what, what is the problem with this? That the problem is that all these, these other attempts to define null coordinates have a problem at the axis of symmetry. I mean, for example, null coordinates are a tool. If you want to use that tool, for example, to solve the uh, scalar field equation, what you will find if you use these null coordinates is that you get a term with a divergent. So you can solve it, that equation, okay? So this is a tool, but when you want to use it, you have to face that these divergences uh, behaviors, okay? So this is the first part of the talk. I give the context, the problem, um, and now I'm going to tell you how we were able to solve this this problem and how we were able to make a new definition of null coordinates in care. Well, if we already have intuition, it is very important to get the correct null congruence. So how we find it? We have to start from the scratch, from the beginning, and we hear uh, from this work of Carter, we know that the most general null congruence has this uh, tangent vector if we take the lower index, we will work with smaller expressions, and for these presentations, it's, <laughs> it's very good. And here, you can see the most general uh, null congruence. Here, E, L, and capital K, which is here, are constants of motion. It means that if you move along one geodesics, E, L, and K remains constant, okay? So if we take different values of these constants, we will been electing different, con different types of congruences, okay? So this is very general. We want to choose the one that, that works, that, have, that has the very nice property. So we make this selection, and we were inspired by the center of mass definition. What is that idea? We take a sphere at infinity, we go to R to, R to infinity, we take a huge sphere, 
And from all the judges, the, the null congruencies, we elect the one that reaches that null, that, that sphere at infinity, reaches orthogonally. I'm trying to schematic describe the idea here, okay? So we have a sphere at infinity, and the null congruence reaches with the null rays orthogonally to that sphere, okay? So if we impose that condition, this imposes a condition over these constants of motion. L must be zero, and capital K, which is the Carter constant, must be A squared sinus A squared of theta, okay? So, um, but this is an, a condition at this sphere at infinity. What happens if we, go, if we go inwards? Well, we want that the congruence is still have this nice property of being orthogonal to these spheres or something like these spheres, okay? So mathematically, this condition uh, is uh, traduced imposing that the exterior de derivative of the tangent vector of the congruence must be zero. So this, uh, this is just saying we want that our congruence is hypersurface, hypersurface orthogonal everywhere. So if we impose the condition, this is uh, codified in this differential equation. So if we solve this differential equation, all, all the details for electing the congruence are codified just here in this differential equation, okay? We did condition at the sphere at infinity, okay? So this is a nonlinear differential equation. It's very difficult to solve analytically, and we did it uh, numerically. And this is a very nice equation. The solution behaves very nice, and we have the solution here at infinity, and we have the solution even inside the event horizon. We can go as far as we want up to the ring singularity. So we can, we can find a solution of k even up to the ring uh, singularity of k. So we can go very inside, and this function behaves very well, okay? So with that solution, now we can go to the congruence that we were electing, and all the information of our election is here in this function k, okay? So the, the next step is, okay, we have to integrate these equations to define the outgoing null coordinate and the ingoing null coordinate, okay? Well, the angular dependence here, you, well, Rs, I mean, if you remember Mikoski, you have u equal to t minus r. The null coordinate in Schwarzschild is t minus the tortoise coordinate, r, r star. But in Kerr, we have this r with, that we call spherical, r spherical. And this has a dependence on the angle theta. What's, that's, that's what one expects because Kerr do not have a spherical symmetry, only axial symmetry. So this depends on theta. So these are the final expressions of the null coordinates. And now let's back to the, to the intuition picture and let's see how these behave. Okay, these are the null coordinates that we have already defined. So which is the null congruence? The null congruence looks like this. Reach orthogonally to a sphere at infinity, but if we go inwards to inward regions, we don't have any more perfect spheres. We have topological spheres. And why I, I make these um, draws like this? Because we were able to compute the Gaussian curvature of each of these surfaces. And from the values of the Gaussian curvature, we have an equivalent uh, surface that are oblate spheroids. I mean, if you go to infinity, Rs is a perfect sphere. If you go inside, this sphere is uh, more uh, smaller in, the, in this axis than in this axis. It becomes an spheroid, uh, spheroid oblate spheroid, sorry. And we know that for the Ga values of the Gaussian curvature, okay? So, um, this is the, the, the final description. I hope that this makes connection with intuition. <laughs> um, and then we can also define the extended null coordinate that allows to cross the event horizon in the same way that cross called null coordinates does in, in the Schwarzschild case. And here I show you the care uh, metric in these null coordinates and show you the inverse because it's a shorter, the shorter one. <laughs> Um, okay, so this is the first part of the talk. Uh, I give you how we 
the context and how we define the signal coordinate. And now I'm going to show you an application example. And we will use this coordinate to solve this equation, which is a scalar field equation. Here you can see the equation in Boyer Linkwitz coordinates and here in the extended center of math coordinates. Um, to make a little bit simpler the, the numerical code, because we solve it numerically, we take um, actual uh, symmetric initial data. So the differential equation is a little bit simpler, but it keeps a non-trivial angular dependence on theta. So we solve this equation numerically. Here I show you two types of initial data. We call these to bell type and these to harmonic type. And here I show you the domain. Well, because we are using double null coordinates, the way that you solve this equation is very dis different than in Boyer language. Here I'm showing you a compatified diagram of Kerr, where here we have region one, which is outside the event horizon. Here's region two, is inside the event horizon. And this, this uh, compactified diagram is valid for all values of theta. This is very, why? Because we, we have the null coordinates that are valued in the whole space time. It's very different than Carter's. Carter's were only valid at the axis of symmetry. This is valued for all values of theta, okay? So how we solve this equation? We have to give initial data here in order to, to obtain a well pose uh, problem. We put here initial data different from zero and we evolve numerically. And here I show you the evolution. As you can see, here we have the evolution. It reached the event horizon, everything is okay, and we can go even inside. So we give initial data outside and we keep the evolution inside. And we can do the same with the other initial data. We give initial data outside, and as you can see, it behaves, it, it behaves very well crossing the horizon. And we don't have any problem at the axis of symmetry. I mean, this is like an indirect proof that the, the null coordinates work very well and can be used for any computation you want, okay? And these numerical results can also be shown in this uh, kind of plot. Here, u equal to zero is the event horizon in null coordinates. And you can see here the scalar field at different angle values and in u equal to zero, you can see that uh, everything is okay. There is no problem. Um, null coordinates function well. The numerical code that solves this equation works well. Everything is okay. So um, to finish, some final remarks. Uh, I have to say that this is the first time that the scalar field is solved using double null coordinates in care. You, you might imagine why is that. Before this work, there, was, there wasn't a, a good definition of null coordinates. So everyone who tried to solve this, this color field had to face the problem of divergences on the axis of symmetry. So I think that that's why. Um, the previous work on this subject, making the, uh, solving the scalar field in double null coordinates was done by Gunlack. Um, he did it in Schwarzschild. So, but now we didn't in, in care, finally, because we have the null coordinates, and we um, use a second order precision code. Here, I don't show you the details of the numerical scheme and code because of time, but you can find in, in, the, in the published work, okay? And uh, we have uh, shown that this color field is well behaved. We can give initial data outside the horizon, and you can cross the event horizon without any problem. And I also have to say that uh, we have tested the precision of the, of the numerical solution. And also we have used an independent test of energy conservation. And the energy conservation was very well, uh, very good, less than 0 .0 point, sorry, 0 0.005%. So the, the, the numerical results are very reliable. Um, so, this is my contribution of my PhD thesis. I hope that many other colleagues start using this new tool to, to study care space time. So uh, that's all of my talk. Thank you for listening. Questions? 
Um, thank you for the nice presentation. So as you are presenting, I was trying to intuitively connect your work to knowledge basics, for instance. There's a slide you showed the condition of the constants of motion. Um, and here? Yeah, yeah, this one. So L is like related to the angular momentum, yes. maybe. So I understand that when it's zero, if it's a geodesic, they're just the only special type of geodesics that can reach the North Pole and the South Pole. So uh, does this condition imply that uh, this work can only work for polar nerve geodesics, the geodesics which can only pass through the poles using this condition? I don't know if that makes okay. sense. Okay, maybe it, it is also related. In fact, uh, if one is studying this in more detail, the, 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 at the end of the day, the, the congruence that we construct is a very particular one. This is a congruence where each of the null rays has a different value of, of k. This is why you have to solve the, the, the k equation. But we also have this uh, null geodesic that goes through, through the poles. So maybe this, this can, can be related with that L is equal to zero. But the other constant of motion, k, make that the, 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 the other null rays behave like this. So there is a combination of constants of motion, as you can see. Uh, okay, so. okay. So because k is not zero, that implies like the equatorial null geodesics cannot, cannot work. Because I think when it's well, zero, they're equatorial. Well, the, the, the function k is like this one. Uh -huh. And you can see here you have theta equal to zero equal to p. And uh -huh. you can see that the k is zero at, at theta equal to to zero, yeah. Yeah. and zero and um, p. K is zero at theta is zero. Eh? Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> K, K is zero at theta is zero. I thought it would be zero at 1.5. Also is zero here. Um, okay, okay, thank you. So K is zero at the axis of symmetry and the, and the equator. Uh, thanks, thanks for the talk. I thought it was very interesting. Uh, just so that I can understand, was there any special procedure that you had to do? I mean, these double null coordinates allow you to do uh, evolution inside the horizon without having to do excision or smoothening the metric in some way, mm -hmm. right? So, uh, I mean, just to clarify here. Yeah. That, that, yes, that, that's right. Because that's a property, that, that is the expected property. For example, in the Schwarzschild case, the mm -hmm. cruise cross, the null coordinates allow to do that. Yes. to do that, and here we have the extended center of mass null coordinate that do the same, but in curve. Okay, that's very interesting, thank you. So I have one question, so as you mentioned, and this is related to from also the last one, so in a, in a sense, yeah, you're going into the black hole and you're excising, because you, you stop the evolution at some point, that, which is fine. So this would, is a very nice setup to study, say, the context of mass inflation in, inside of the uh, rotating event, uh, black hole space-time. But on that, there is, so part of the reason the Tchaikovsky equation is very popular is because then you can uh, do separation of variables and then treat the angular and mm -hmm. the radial part separately. Do you know with your coordinates where this stands or you separability goes out of the window? Given well, that K now, well, given that K is known numerically, mm -hmm. that probably is tough to decide at the moment. Well. We, we have this uh, differential equation. We didn't try to do that, to do something like separate the equation in, in different, comp the dependence on different coordinates that like many other do in, in Tolkowski. We simply have this uh, differential equation. Uh, we solve it full numerically. That, that, that was what our approach up to now. We didn't study to try to set uh, make a s variable separation for trying to solve this differential equation. We solve it just numerically. Okay, so I think Carlo again. Marcus, Marcus. <laughs> Sorry, Marcus.